guys, it's well. Yeah, I know, long time since I've been on camera. I'm gonna try to fix that a little bit this year. But I just wanted to chime in and give my two cents on um, a newer-ish indie game that came out. Uh, a new retro game called Crypt Stalker. And I was a little taken by this game. I was surprised, pleasantly surprised. So, so much so that I wanted to do a little mini review. Um, and actually appear on camera for once. <laughs> so I thought, why not chime in and give my two cents on what I think is a wonderful Castlevania 1 clone. So let's get started with Cryptstalker. I love new retro games. Blazing Chrome, a love letter to Contra. Infernax, a direct nod to Castlevania II Simon's Quest with a dash of Xanadu. Prison City, whose likeness closely resembles Power Blade and Escape from New York. Yeah, the do! Yeah, the do! And now Crypt Stalker, a harking back to simpler times with straightforward, no-nonsense action. So it's time to dust off our whips and forget that Metroidvania stuff, because we're going old school this time. You must be busy. Cryptstalker was developed by Sinclair Strange, nice tip of the hat to Natsume there, and was released in 2020? I'm not sure why I've never heard of this game before with a release date four years back now, but it seems to have gotten a new lease on life with the release of the Switch version. I'm looking at the Steam Edition for this review. This game screams Castlevania 1 all over, and that's a great thing since we don't normally get straightforward classic Vania games too often now. Well, Bloodstained Curse of the Moon 1 and 2 being the exceptions. Normally these new retro games opt for a Metroidvania style where you get to a seemingly dead end, leave, get a new ability, come back and access a whole new area. But not here. We play as Gladys? <laughs> a crypt stalker out to hunt and vanquish the demons of hell. Every 90th solar eclipse, a portal opens up, unleashing hordes of baddies to lay waste to. This time the portal has opened up inside one of the pyramids, so it's up to the crypt stalkers to save everyone. We have two buttons here, one to use our main weapon, which is an upgradable whip, very cool, and the other is a jump button. Now, I heard the Switch version has backwards controls, for example, B jumps and A button attacks, which is a big no-no to old school gamers. I didn't have this problem on the Steam version since you can change your controls there, so no biggie. Also, pressing the select button will choose your firearm. Yes, you get a pretty sweet ranged weapon to use, and instead of sub-weapons like holy water or boomerangs or things like that, we get different guns like a laser, multi-shot, grenade. Very cool and very handy. I wound up using my ranged weapons quite often, especially during boss battles. They were lifesavers. The biggest thing with the controls, and the biggest flaw of the game in my opinion, is just how fast you move. Like, you move real quick around the levels. You zip around. You're constantly bumping into things and falling into pits at first. This isn't like Castlevania 1 where the controls and platforming are super tight. I never quite felt in control of Gladys here, so until you get a handle of how fast you move and the height of your jump, you're going to lose lives. There is also some hit detection wonkiness too, but that's not a real deal breaker for me. Cryptstalker is quite the striking game. The colors really stand out and the sprites are nicely detailed. I freaking love these little Anubis enemies. They look so cool, man. The bosses for the most part are big and sick looking too. My favorites being the first level and the sixth level, just awesome. Glass looks pretty cool too, and you do get a nice cutscene at the beginning and ending a la Ninja Gaiden, so again, really nice touches with the graphics. The levels are varied too. We get some you know, water levels, we get a desert stage in the intro, we get inside the actual pyramid itself and other wacky and craziness, lava flow areas, things like that. So the levels are actually nicely detailed in the backgrounds, maybe a little bit kind of busy in the backgrounds, but are very detailed and are nice to look at. The music to me is good, but really not that memorable. Mike Tendo had this problem as well. 
Unlike Castlevania or even Bloodstained Curse of the Moon, none of these tracks stuck into my brain long after I finished the game, which stinks because the Egyptian theme works so well with this, you know, darker styled platformer game. It's just such a shame that not, not a lot of the tracks really stood out to me. But here's my favorite one. From the start, we can select the main game, which has three different play modes. Classic, which has limited save points, but actually saves our progress. Casual mode, which gives us way more save points, but doesn't save our actual game. And some lost levels to play around with. There is even a Game Boy style version of the game, which is actually quite awesome. I really love it because you know how much I love Game Boy. Cool. I think I might do a separate review of that game as it is a bit different. The levels I wanted to mention because I quite like the layouts. There's always some trick or gimmick in each stage, like the arrow platforms in stage 2, contending with water hazards in stage 3, lava flows in stage 4, and so on. Each new area brought a new twist or element, and I really enjoyed that, so bravo there. I found the boss battles to be quite all over the place. Most of the big baddies I found to be, well, pushovers. And one of the later bosses seemed out of place, more like a mini boss that was very easy to kill. I do like the water boss, and when you're on that platform, that was really cool to fight him. But even the final big boss wasn't much of a hassle. I beat him my first try. Getting to the actual bosses itself, I found way more challenging than the actual end fights themselves. I really like Cryptstalker. The visuals are drenched with neon 80s colors, with good enemy variety, big bosses for the most part, with decent controls for the most part. I love the different firearms and the whip hooks are always fun to swing on. The hit detection can be a little wonky and the movement speed you'll need to adjust to. But there's good challenge here. There's nice cutscenes and good, if not great music. Overall, it's a fun new retro game and I say give it a try. So is it perfect? No, but you know what? Not a lot of games are perfect. Uh, as far as Castlevania clones go, this is one of the better ones, definitely. Maybe just below uh, Bloodstained Circle of the Moon 1 and 2, but it's definitely worth your time, effort, and money. And speaking of which, it's not that expensive. Anyways, this is the Max Impact 24 channel. I'm Will. For those about the retro, we salute you. Take care.